Hey guys, welcome back. So I appreciate it's been a hot minute since I spoke to you about manga. I've just silently been reading away behind the scenes, enjoying my books. As you know, I've had a lot of um, manga hauls over the last couple of years and I've got a lot of, uh, well, my to be read pile is pretty big. But I, I thought I'd catch up with you and let you know what I've been reading over the last couple of months. So I have started um, Monster. So I'm currently on book uh, number six. I've got the whole collection out there ready to go but man this series is amazing by uh naoki urasawa so yeah i apologize if i um, if i will butcher the names i will butcher the names just letting you know right now but this is an amazing series so i've only got a little bit to go in, in volume six now moving on to number seven but yeah it's an amazing amazing series i've got the anime to watch as well but in regards to the book yeah it's masterful storytelling it's got some great drawings inside I'm loving the mystery and the, and the twists and turns. You just be reading through the story and then there'd be like a surprise reveal on the very next page and you're like, wow, and I love that surprise element of it. It's perfectly perfectly structured and you do have some uh, some color pages as well. But once again, no, no spoilers, but I am loving the series. It's very cool. So I've also been reading uh, a lot of Junji Ito. I've caught up with a few of his books over the, over the last month. And this one is uh, No Longer Human. So this one is um, based on a book written by an author who killed himself uh, in the 30s, I think it was. Uh, he was 38 years old and, and he died in 1948. He wrote a book and it was really a story about a man just um, sinking into, into madness and, and depression, a lot of drug abuse and um, a lot of horrible failed relationships. It's a... It's a, it's a it's a bleak story, it really is. And Jinji Ito has managed to capture that story with some amazing illustrations. It's a it's a heavy read. It's not one to make you feel good about yourself when you've finished it, but it is a, a masterwork, and I highly recommend you check this one out. It's it's very cool. There's the front page. That's when we look at the cover. So Junji Ito is um relatively new to me. But I, I, I love his stuff, man. So far, it's been it's been alright. It's very, very cool, very creepy and and dark and bleak. Awesome. So next, I've also caught up with uh, Planetes. Is it Planetes or Planets? Let me know in the comments. Like I said, my, my pronunciation is terrible. But this is Planets by and I must read the name one more time. Makoto Yukimura. So I've got book one, and these are nice thick volumes too. Very, very cool. They're about a uh, well, basically, it's set in the future. And the Earth, there's book number two, the Earth has got um, a lot of rubbish. Humans are just terrible, man. We're just polluting everything. So in space, in the, in the Earth's atmosphere, there's a lot of junk. So we need cleanup crews to go and, and take care of business because basically there's so much junk in the atmosphere, we really can't leave the planet. We're locked in because rockets blasting through that debris will cause damage. So it's up to these um these cleaners to go up and, and and clear it all. So really great story. And once again, some amazing illustrations, a lot of color pages as well. And it kind of focuses on on all the team. There's like three in the crew, and each one gets an arc, and they focus a lot on on their stories and their lives and their livelihood. So awesome. That's a nice big read. So if you want to get that one, yeah, it's uh it's pretty thick, it's awesome. So this is the next Junji Ito novel I read. Romina or Remina. I've been calling it Remina in my head for some reason. I did know a girl by the name of Romina, so maybe that's the correct pronunciation. But Remina is about a planet, a, a big planet that just drifts through the universe eating other planets. So this thing, this creepy, creepy planet, has decided to come to Earth and it starts. Um, well, there's a lot of natural disasters and stuff. I mean, having a planet that close to Earth, obviously. The, the gravitational pull is going to be affected, but also there's a lot of weird supernatural stuff going on as well. So the story kind of focuses on a few people who are just trying to survive. And um, yeah, with this impending doom, I mean, look at that. It's just uh, the artwork is insane. But this impending doom of this planet, which, have, which has arrived right next to Earth in our orbit and is about to devour our, our home. So once again, no spoilers. But it's uh, as, as fairly bleak and dark. But like I said, the illustrations, um, they're good. Junji Ito is a master of his craft. And, I, and I've got most of his books to read. 
So I'm very new to Junji Ito, but I'm, I'm excited to dive into into his other works, man. It's, it's good. And the last series I've been reading over the last month and a half is, wow, it's incredible. It's, it's really kind of risen to the, the top of my favorite mangas very, very quickly. And that is the um, Blood on the Tracks. So we've got book one. Book number two, book number three, number four, and number five. So these took a while to, to, to get to me. I pre-ordered them a long time ago and they've just been trickling in one at a time. And I was totally engrossed with this story. It was beautifully drawn. Let me just get the first one. There we go. That's the cover of the first one. So the illustrations, once again beautifully done and the story is essentially uh, about a mother and son and and their family so once again if you've not read this i'm not going to spoil anything but it's about their relationship and it, it's not healthy there's um some things going wrong with this family and it is very very compelling now it's not very dialogue heavy like it's definitely got some dialogue in it but a lot of the pages are literally capturing mood and tone and atmosphere and emotion and it's not really conveyed in words, like I said, but it's done it's done so beautifully and it just sucks you in. Like they're they're very quick reads. So because there's not a lot of stuff to read, you will find yourself flicking through it very, very quickly. So I do, you know, I tried to slow down just to to admire the, the art. Let me put that aside because that's that works out better. I just wanted to appreciate the artwork. So I found myself kind of just studying the pages, looking at his use of light and shadow. It was just Amazing, and the artist is Shuzo Oshimi. So once again, an amazing book series, and I highly recommend that you you read these, man, because um, there are some twists and turns in this that will shock you, and the story is just so compelling, and the characters are rich, and wow, this is a good series, man. It really is. All right, so on my hit list of books to read, I have been uh, enjoying Beastars. So I've got book number eleven to dive into. This series is one of my favorite mangas ever. It's, it's beautifully done and where the story's going from where it was when I first started out, like basically it's just a murder mystery. It's just got such an amazing rich world of characters and the story is just expanding and growing so organically and it's beautifully drawn. I mean, you can just see the illustrations are gorgeous. The anime is good. I've watched season one of that, but Beastars is incredible. So it's a, it's a good, good recommendation. If you want to get into a really great manga, Beastars. And then I picked up Ichi F. Ichi F. So this one is by Kazuto Tatsua. And this one is about the um the Fukushima, the Fukushima disaster, which happened a few years back when there was an earthquake and this nuclear power plant. Um, well there was a meltdown. So this is um based on the, the notes of an actual person who was there. To kind of clean up so it's all about the uh, the radiation sickness that they got they could be in there for a certain amount of time before the radiation would be fatal so it's just from this per this person's perspective in the fukushima power plant and what it was like days after the meltdown so nice big thick read i haven't looked I haven't even cracked this one open yet the illustrations look pretty nice um i've not really read anything or heard of kazuto tatsuta before but it's um it come to me highly recommended and I've heard great things about it and obviously I was very interested in, in the um in the story of Fukushima having you know being a real world event that's only happened recently so um that's on my to be read list so that's just a, a brief catch up obviously as you can see I've got um a lot of books behind me over here to dive into I will try to make my my manga catch ups more frequent but I'm, I'm not the fastest reader I do take my time with them so I will try and make this much more of a regular thing because I know a lot of people are, are they're screaming out for more manga hauls. I'm not really buying much new manga in regards to like haul videos. Now, it's mostly just series I've already started like Kermit Can't Communicate and the uh, the Quintessential Quintuplets. So I just get one or two of those when they arrive. Um, Demon Slayer, um, uh, My Hero Academia, those kind of books. So just one at a time as they get released. So our Dr. Stone, so I've got a, I've got a haul. There's a lot. I've got my, my box sets over that side. So yeah, I've got a lot to do. So I'm not really buying as much manga as I did. I, find, I feel like I've got enough for a library. So now it's just about reading them. So anyway, I'm, I'm glad I finally got the chance to spend some time with you and just catch you up on what I'm reading. 
No, it's kind of a small one, but you know, that's what it is. So please discuss below what you like about these mangas if you've read them. More recommendations. Like you said, you can probably zoom in and see what I've got over there. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'd sell my soul to take you home. Oh, oh, oh. Run through the fire.